She's just a girl. She's just a girl. The girl you want. Oh, yeah. So, I'm betting when you bought your uh, Behringer Neutron, you weren't planning to just play Square Waves. <laughs> you were to play something a little bit more interesting. What we're going to talk to about today is filters. When we work with synthesis, we do, we do what's called subtractive synthesis. We start with a broad range of frequencies, and then we start cutting them out until we get what we want. And we do that with this right over here. This is our filter section. And what you've heard me playing right now is a really interesting patch uh, that takes advantage of two filters inside the Behringer Neutron. There are actually two, not one. And we will talk about this patch at the end of the video. I just want to do something a little fun there, show you what you can look forward to at the end. Right now, we're going to take this thing back to our empty patch mode. Let's drop the right here. Let's see. Okay. Close enough. Um, bring that level up. All right, you can kind of hear that. What have we got here? So I'm starting out. I'm on. I have two sawtooths. We're tuned to C on both oscillators. They're mixed together equally. Um, I need to reset my filter. Getting back to default, getting back to the default mode. There we go. Okay, so let's talk about our filter and what it does and the types of filters. Now, the easiest way to explain this, we're going to start by talking about a low pass filter, which is what I'm on right now. Uh, this at the top, you can see that light up, that's your high pass filter. You have band pass and low pass. Those are your three filter options on the Neutron. Now, with a low pass filter, I think it's uh, the easiest one to explain because it exists naturally. Uh, if you want to do an experiment, you can fill your bathtub up and uh, start the stereo playing in the next room and then dunk your head in there, and you'll just hear muffled low frequencies. That is a very rudimentary uh, low pass filter. So if you want to pause the video, I'll wait here until you've dried your head off. Uh, but in all seriousness, I think we've all tried, you know, we've all experienced this at a swimming pool or whatever. Another example is when you have a room and people are playing music in that room and they've shut the door and you're outside the room. You just hear the bass and the low frequencies come through. Uh, this is, yeah. So that is a low pass filter. What it's doing is it's filtering the sound out to where only low frequencies get through. Now, on this, let's look at what we got here. Playing some notes. Let me increase my octaves. Okay, so we're starting with this sawtooth. Now watch, I'm going to start turning this down. This is my frequency. This is the cutoff, right? It's like how much of those high frequencies are we going to cut out? As soon as I turn it back, listen, it gets more and more muffled until only low frequencies are coming through right right okay easy enough to understand that's a low pass filter look that's all there is to it um, so what is a high pass filter I can't think of one of these that exist in nature but effectively it's the opposite we're gonna start at this end we got all the frequencies coming through right? and we start cutting out the low end right? See, now you just got that real tinny high end left as you're moving up. Everything, real tinny high end, right? That's your high pass filter. So what is a band pass filter? Well, it's cutting off the lowest frequencies and the highest frequencies at a point, and you're moving that point around, deciding what frequencies you're going to let through. And again, it's easier just to listen to this. Right, so I'm going to put on band pass. Yeah, high up there, low down there. Right, that's your band pass filter. So that's that's really easy, I think, to kind of wrap your head around. Now, the next control here we so frequency again 
that setting at what point you're doing the trimming. Resonance, that's this knob. This is actually pretty easy to understand also. Whatever frequency you're setting here, this is going to boost the amplitude, kind of the volume if you want to think of that, of the signals right at that frequency. What does this mean in practice? It can kind of add a, a high pitched or, or whistling overtone depending on how you use it. Let's just play with it, watch. It's all a function of your resonance. Okay, so we've talked about our types of filters. We've talked about resonance. <clears throat> um, One of the things about this, you can see I've been playing with this frequency knob, moving it in and out. And there are other controls that will automate that process, if you will. Now, I'm going to refer back to our most useful uh, routing sheet that we talked about before. We see we have this low frequency oscillator. Oh, you, but I, I thought I said I only had two oscillators. Well, these are audible oscillators. This is a low frequency oscillator. It works kind of like these. But it moves very slowly and we can use it to control other things and you see by default it ties over here to our VCF our voltage control filter that's wired in and we see mod depth is what is <coughs> sorry mod depth is what's controlling how much effect it has uh, the LFO is right here and you can set the rate. So this is how fast it's moving. You can set its shape. Just as we set the shape on these different oscillators. So here we've got it moving in a pretty good clip. It's not doing anything because the mod depth is all the way down. Now watch as I increase my mod depth. Whoa, that's cool, right? And what is that? That's just like me sitting there twisting that knob back and forth really fast. It's just, instead, it's using the, uh, trying to get the, <laughs> my camera to focus again. Instead, it's just using the LFO to do that for me. We've automated it. So that's very useful. There's a lot we can do with an LFO. This is just one thing. The other thing to note is that there is an envelope on the VCF. And again, if we, if we check our routing sheet, we can see that it's envelope two. So envelope two can set, uh, again, it's like, it's like someone turns this thing and turns it down. I'm gonna save the conversation of envelopes for another video. So there's a lot to unpack there, but just know there's another way of shaping the filter or moving this frequency in and out in a predictable way. And that's important when you go to simulate certain instruments um, because they, they do tend to, their frequencies change. Like when you pluck a guitar string or something like that, you're getting a movement of frequencies as well as a movement of amplitudes. And that's what we're doing with the envelope. So, yeah, this is really cool. Uh, I think we've covered what I consider like one of the most difficult things to understand and I, I tried to put it in as simple a way as I can. So, let's, let's look at this. Now, what did I say before? I said we actually had two VCFs, not one. That's true. <clears throat> when you look at the patch bay, even though it's not indicated over here, when you look at the patch bay, you'll see that you have a VCF1 and a VCF2. And what's happening there is if VCF1 is set to a high-pass filter, VCF2 will be bandpass, and if VCF1 uh, is set to bandpass, then VCF2 will be low pass. And so what that means is we can combine these together to, for example, like get a notch filter and things like that. And this is very easy to do. We're just going to take VCF1 and VCF2, and we'll put them in some 1A 
someone B. We're going to take our summed output, so that's the output of both filters together, and we'll pass them directly to overdrive N. That's all there is to it. So what we've done is uh, we're using, right now this is just VCF1, right, going to the overdrive. What we've done is we've looped in overdrive, we've looped in VCF2 and fed them together into overdrive. And that's what I was using for that, uh, my weird tank girl patch, that tank girl baseline. So let's look at that guy real quick. <clears throat> we're, we're almost there actually. So I'm going to turn the frequency up a little bit, turn the resonance down. Uh, frequency is about at one o'clock. Resonance is about at 11. We're going to go to mod depth. We're going to go right up here around eight o'clock. We're going to leave the envelope depth all the way down. It's not using that. Um, set our rate a little bit high. We want it to warble is what we're kind of looking for. Now I am on envelope one. I'm going to move this up just a notch. And again, I'll talk about envelopes in a later section. So getting close. Um, I need to drive this thing so we have the drive set at about one or two o'clock it's two o'clock tone is right at noon level is down a little bit to to compensate for overdriving it now we got my depth I'm going to drop down a couple octaves. There she is. Right. That's all there is to it. So, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this brief introduction to your voltage controlled filters. Uh, again, by messing with this, you're going to get all kinds of crazy sounds. You'll be able to, on day one, you're going to create all kinds of wonderful basses and, you know, tones that you can use. I was just messing around and I found this in, in no time at all. And this patch actually is described in the manual, even though they don't give you an actual patch sheet for it. They actually describe this process in the manual. Okay, well, I hope that you guys had a good time. I hope that this is useful, and I'll talk to you next time to talk about envelopes, and maybe we'll simulate an actual acoustic instrument at that time. Peace out.